Today's topic is tunneling. What is it and why does it matter? And this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's do it. All right, normally I don't have any props with me, but some friendly commenters have said in the past videos that seeing some visuals might be helpful. And I think for this topic specifically, visuals will be super important. So tunneling, it's been talked about a lot. I'm sure you've heard it on ESPN. I'm sure you've heard it on Pitching Ninja and wherever else your local coach probably has said it to you before, but what is tunneling? That's the first part. And then why is it important? Okay, so I'm not a very good drawer. But uh, imagine a tree with one trunk and then a bunch of branches that come off of it. We're all familiar with that, all right? If you turned that on its side, so now the trunk was going sideways and then the branches were splitting off in a bunch of different directions, that's what I think tunneling is. Each of those different branches would be a different pitch type, but they would all start down the same line this, on the trunk and then they would go off in different directions. So I'm gonna to attempt to draw this. Uh, we have a tree, it's gonna be a skinny tree, and then you have this branch that goes here, you have another branch that goes off over here, and a couple like this, and then you have this branch, and that branch, and this one. All right, here's my colorful tree. Uh, so if you turn this on its side, and you imagine that the mound is over here and the plate, oh, let's see if I can do this, is there, this would be your tunnel. And all your pitches would start off down the trunk and then some would dive down here and some would stay straight and then some would go up, preferably, if they could. Um, you can also do this, you know, if you're looking straight down on top of it, then you might have a two seam if you're a righty that runs this way and a slider that runs over this way. But you can see how this kind of looks like if you turn it this way, a tree. No, yes, maybe. Anyway, that's how I think about it. So that's kind of what tunneling is. Let me give you a couple better examples of what I'm talking about. So let's say you have a Let's pick two pitches, a fastball and a curveball, all right? And we're going to look at this from the side. So we're, I'm going to take, I'm a righty, so I'll talk about it as if I'm a righty. If you're a lefty, you can flip it around. So on the left, you're going to have your strike zone. And on the right, you're going to have your rubber. And I'll put a little mound on it so we all know what we're talking about. So here's our little setup. And you might have a fastball that starts off, and you want to throw the fastball down in the zone. So the fastball is going to look kind of like this, and then you obviously want to throw your curveball down in the zone, but in order to get the curveball down, it's going to have to start and look kind of like this. Okay, so here's our, here's our first setup. You have uh, your strike zone, so this is the top of the strike zone, bottom of the strike zone, you have your mound and your pitcher up here, and he's throwing these pitches. Well, at no point do these pitches look like a tree trunk. So when the hitter is looking at the curveball in green, they can see it pop up quite a bit. Whereas when they see the fastball, it starts off pretty straight and ends up at the bottom of the zone. So that's not tunneling. Let me draw another example here for you to show you more so what would be tunneling. So we have our same setup and we have our same two pitches, but now if we throw that fastball at the top of the zone, it looks kind of like that. And if we throw the curveball at the bottom of the zone, it looks kind of like this. So now, you can see the fastball up here and the curveball down here, but over here, at the first, for this part of the flight, those pitches look pretty close. It would be hard for a hitter to identify exactly what each pitch type was because you don't see this big, you don't see that big pop that you saw up top. And so this is why throwing fastballs at the top of the zone has become more important. There's other reasons for it, but it hides the breaking balls. 
So you can throw a fastball and you can throw a breaking ball, it looks the same, and then the breaking ball goes down and the fastball stays up, and so you get this deception. Another thing, another reason this is important is because when you talk about 90 miles an hour to get from release point to the plate, you're talking about 0.45 seconds, half a second, let's say. So if you can make pitches look the same, let's say this is half a flight, which isn't really realistic, but let's just say for this example, you can make these two pitches look the same for half the flight. Well then, the hitter has to make his decision on whether to swing sometime in that half a flight. Reaction time for hitters is 0.2 seconds, something like that. Some of the best guys can, at the, very, at the big league level can do it in 0.16 from the time they decide to swing till they get the barrel in the zone and contact the ball. But let's just say it's 0.2 and it's average and the ball gets there in 0.45 seconds. That's about half the time. So if they don't make their decision in this first half of flight, they can't, they can't hit it. They don't know what's going to come. Uh, they don't know where to position the barrel. They, it, it takes away all their reads. So that's a good thing for pitchers. Whereas in this example, they might identify the difference way back here, and they might have a lot of time to read these pitches. So this is the example, again, looking from the side on what a fastball at the top of the zone and a curveball might look like and how you can tunnel those. So the same thing can be said in, uh, for left and right. I'll draw a really quick one before we move on here. So if you're looking straight down, so now you have a plate, and you're looking straight down on it, so you have your rubber over here, you might start a fastball, and it might run arm side. So let's say you throw a two-seamer as a righty, and you want to throw it away from a righty. So it might start off on this line over here and come back a little bit. And then you might want to throw a slider that is back door, and so your slider might start off over here and come back to this side of the plate a little bit. So you'd have this look. Your two seam starts off and you throw it, it looks like it's going to be outside and it comes back and hits the corner. The slider looks like it's going to be inside and it comes back and hits the corner. But at no point do these things match up. So there's early recognition on the, the ball going left or right or this way. So the hitter can get some early information on it. So if we do that again, but instead we choose to throw the fastball inside and the slider away, then the fastball inside might look kind of like this and the slider away might look kind of like this and now again we have this distance so you can kind of crisscross them and overlap the trajectories so that these look like they're pretty much the same for again close to half the flight and then the slider ends up slow and over here, and the fastball ends up hard and inside. And so you're taking away the hitter's early reads on what that pitch is. And that can only be good for the pitchers, because then you can create deception. So that's what tunneling is, and a little bit about why tunneling matters. Uh, let's dive in a little bit more onto why tunneling matters. If you've watched my last video where I talk about hitter attention, um, then you'll this will make a little bit more sense to you. If you haven't, go check that video out. It's the last tips with Trev. But if you draw a hitter's attention to a specific location and a specific speed, he will get better at hitting that specific location and speed the more you throw it there. So let's say I throw, let me draw a strike zone here. I'm facing a righty. Yay, here's my stick figure righty. Is that good? I don't know if that's good. That looks pretty bad, but whatever. If you always throw, if you throw this righty five pitches in this up and in location, all fastballs, he's going to be able to be better at hitting that. He's going to start saying, okay, this guy's trying to get me out up and in. I'm going to start swinging at up and in fastballs. So the more you throw this pitch here, the better he gets at hitting it. But what if you then throw him a pitch that looks like it's going to be here, but instead it ends up down here. Well, he's gonna swing, and this is slower. Let's say this is 90 and this is 80. Well, he's gonna start to swing like he's seeing a fastball up and in, and then he's gonna be way out in front, and he's probably gonna open his shoulders up, and the slider's gonna break away from him if this is a slider, and he's not gonna have any chance to hit it. 
This only can happen if you, again, hide the pitches. So the slider might come in like this, and the fastball might come in like this. And that is tunneling. So you show him a pitch that looks like it's going to be a fastball inside after you've shown him some fastballs inside. And then you throw him the slider away. His body goes this way. The slider goes the other way. And he's out. I got the wrong cap on the wrong marker. Check that out. So this is important because it, under, it teaches you how to utilize your pitches and where to utilize them. And so you can combine attention, hitter's attention, with tunneling to get different results. If I want a guy to be late on a pitch, I can throw him some sliders away that kind of have this movement, and then I can throw him a fastball in that kind of has this movement. It looks the same. He reads it as the same pitch he just saw, and then it surprises him inside. If I want to get a guy to swing and miss at a curveball down below the zone, it's probably more effective to throw him some high fastballs that look kind of like this, and then a curveball that starts there and then drops and is slower. So that's what, what tunneling is why tunneling matters, and a little bit about how you can use tunneling to your advantage to trick hitters' eyes and to get them off timing and miss barrels and strike more people out. So that's all for today's episode. Hopefully you didn't, uh, hopefully you didn't mind my drawing too much. It was pretty bad. I'll get better at it. But uh, let me know what you think of this episode. If you have any more questions about it, leave them in the comments below. If you have anything to say about it, if you want to critique my drawing or tell me something I could do better, Give me some more ideas uh, of things that you guys would like to know more about. That would be super helpful. Leave me a like if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you could do me a favor and tell people that this channel exists, that would be great. I make these videos to try to help as many people as possible. So the more people see them, the better off uh, we'll all be. I'll be able to help people and hopefully you guys will get more entertainment out of them. I have a goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. So. Help me on my goal. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next video.